G'day and welcome to Inside Rugby with Mark. If you haven't been here before, my name is Mark. I'm a re retired Kiwi bloke living here in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. And I want to welcome you to my channel. If you like my content, why not hit the subscribe button, stick around, hit the like button. We're, we're growing a fantastic global rugby community here on this channel. And we're all sharing our perspective views on all sorts of different things that happen in rugby games across the world. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about that absolutely thrilling game that took place yesterday at Kings Park in Durban between the South African Springboks and Ireland. It was the last game of the summer series for Ireland. They were going to go off on a holiday after this one. And the Springboks, well, they're building in towards the rugby championship. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this game went. Now the Springboks got the first game that took place in Pretoria last weekend. So Ireland were out for revenge and the South Africans were looking to put the series out of doubt with a 2-0 win. What actually happened? Well, let's get into the video and find out. Now, after another two stirring renditions of the respective national anthems, we got underway in the game. And I'm pleased to report first up that Quagga Smith was able to cap catch the kickoff from Jack Crowley. Yes, Quagga Smith had a little bit of problems with the kickoffs in the last game, but he got this one for the South Africans and put them on the front foot. And uh, they started off pretty well in the first minute of this game. But it didn't take long for Ireland to get into this game and we were going to see a very different Ireland than we saw last weekend in Pretoria. Maybe it was the fact we were down at sea level again, but maybe it was also Ireland getting a bit of a rev up from Andy Farrell during the week, feeling as though they didn't start off that game in Pretoria in very good fashion and they should put a little bit more energy and passion into it in the first half of this game. Well, that's exactly what happened and we saw Ireland really starting off with some intensity in this game. And I thought the strategy they used in the first few minutes of this game just to soften up the South Africans was actually working and going pretty well. Now, unfortunately for the Springboks, they lost Willie LaRue in the first couple of minutes of this game to an HIA. He went off, had an assessment, didn't come back on the field. So that was going to be a big loss for the Springboks, no doubt about it. Sasha Feinberg came on to replace him. I was excited about that, and I'm sure many of you were as well. He's already a fan. I'm already a fan of his, I should say. And uh, he didn't take long to get himself into the game and start showing us what he had. Franco Mostad also had a bit of a blood issue going on early in the game. And this was a reflection, I think, about how hard Ireland were going into this. They were putting a lot of emphasis on. There were some big hits in the first five minutes of this game. And uh, it just so happened that the South Africans were coming out on the wrong side of that. I don't think... I've I don't think I've seen so much blood in one game of rugby as I saw in this game. At one stage, there was more claret coming out of Etzebeth's head than there was wine coming out of the Stellenbosch region yesterday in South Africa. It was absolutely incredible. However, we got to five minutes and it was that man Etzebeth that infringed in a breakdown and uh, gave a penalty away to Ireland. It was an opportunity, the first opportunity in the game for Ireland to have a shot at goal and Jack Crowley made no mistake. So Ireland went ahead three points to nil after five minutes of the game. Straight after the kickoff from uh, that restart, we saw Faf de Klerk get the ball and do a nice little chip over the top of the English defense. And as a result of that, we saw Cheslin Colby almost pick up the ball and take off and score a try. Unfortunately, the ball spilled out of his hands. It was a little bit of an unfortunate situation for Colby. But South Africa were showing their intent. They wanted to be expansive with this game. But Ireland had a lot more in the tank and they were about to show it. I was really interested to see how Ireland were going to go in the first 20 minutes of this game because I thought it was going to dictate a lot about the outcome of the actual game. It wasn't much longer before we saw Etzebeth go off and get his head seen to. He had to get it taped up. It was so much blood coming out. And during that time, we saw R.G. Schneeman come on to replace him. Now, South Africa were having a little bit of trouble containing the Irish at this stage. They were starting to show their strategy in this game, and I thought it was a very good strategy. Connor Murray, who I'd been giving a hard time to in the past, so I've got to eat a bit of humble pie around Connor Murray today. Him and Jack Crowley started playing very intelligently in this game and they started using the inside channels and putting a lot of pressure on the South Africans in close so getting their big man to do a lot of tackles and use up a lot of energy in this game and I thought that was really clever on behalf of the Irish so we saw the likes of Kalen Doris and Ryan 
making a lot of runs in close to the breakdown areas. We also saw Andrew Porter doing a lot in there as well. And Kalia, who'd replaced uh, Dan Sheehan in this game, was also pretty prominent in some of those runs. So the Irish strategy was keep the ball close, one or two passes out, hit the South Africans hard, and then go again for second and third phase play. And this was and it was in the 13th minute of the game that we saw that pressure start to tell on the spring box. And it was Jamie Osborne that got through a gap and he had Connor Murray in support. And Connor Murray went over for a great try for the Irish. And this was a really good momentum game for the Irish. They showed that their pressure they were putting in with those close runs up the inside channel against the spring box was starting to work. And sooner or later, the spring box defense was gonna open up and Jamie Osborne took off through the gap. So it was a good try by Ireland, put them out in the lead. The conversion was good from Jack Crowley. And before we knew it, Ireland were out in the lead by 10 points to nil after just 15 minutes of this game. We got to the 16th minute mark and Franco Mostert uh, picked up an injury that he couldn't shake off. So we saw RG Schneeman coming on full time. So that uh, diluted a little bit the impact of the bomb squad. So I was gonna be interested to see how that would go in the second half. And this has always been one of the risky things with the bomb squad, isn't it? If one of the players get hurt, or even two of the players get hurt in the first half, then maybe it's gonna take a little bit more of the emphasis away from the bomb squad. Now, I think it'll be a good time to remind everybody that going head to head in South Africa, the Irish have only won one game out of 10, out of 11 in fact, and uh, it was 10-1 going into this game. The last game Ireland won, in South Africa was in 2016. So the Irish were really looking to see if they could turn around that stat in particular. We got to the 18th minute mark and this was the time that South Africa put some points on the board. Pollard got a penalty kick over, so the score was back to 10 points to three and South Africa were on the board, but it was Ireland at this stage that were making the running in this game. They were doing some massive hits and they were continuing with their strategy, which was working. Crowley was also doing some very good kicks in general play. He was looking to break up the South African defense from side to side. And we saw Sasha Feinberg make a couple of mistakes in the back play when he was going up for high balls. He was just missing his timing a little bit and allowed the, allowed the Irish to get on the front foot and put some pressure on the, the Springboks in the back three. We saw a good piece of play around the 26 minute mark for the Springboks. We saw Peter Stefter toy charge down a, uh, a kick from Crowley and it gave Quagga Smith the opportunity to pick up the ball and uh, try to shoot towards the line but unfortunately Quagga didn't have enough pace he was caught by the Irish defense the South Africans weren't able to turn the ball over and get quick phase play back and the Irish ended up clearing that one from their line so that was a good opportunity for the Springboks that they didn't able or well, they weren't able to convert at that particular time what I liked about the way Ireland were playing this first half though was the way they were controlling possession. They were being patient, they were going through multiple phases of play, they were tiring the South Africans out and I was sure that this was going to have a bigger impact later on in the half of rugby. 28th minute of the game and the Irish made a little bit of a mistake, they took it back into their 22, kicked it out on the full, I think it was James Lowe that did the kick and it gave South, Africa's, South Africans an opportunity to go on attack with a line out. They got into the line-out situation, but the ball was then turned over by Ireland and they were able to clear it. And this was starting to be a bit of a pattern in the game. Whenever the South Africans looked like they were getting on the front foot, the Irish defence was massive and they were putting the South Africans to the ground. And there were some big hits going in again by Ryan and Kalen Doris in particular. Josh van der Fleer was getting to uh, do a lot of good things in this game as well, particularly in the breakdown. He was clearing out really well and he was getting to the breakdown early and this was putting pressure on the South Africans. So then we started getting into a little bit of a kicking feast and around the 33rd minute of the game, the Springboks got another penalty opportunity. Andre Pollard got that over, so the score was back to 10 points to six and the South Africans were slowly getting back into this. But the Irish were having a lot of the domination in this first half and they were putting a lot of pressure and it was only a couple of minutes later that once again they were down in the spring box half. They got themselves a penalty so they quickly nullified that spring box penalty by Jack Crowley getting another attempt over and pushing the score out to 13 points to six in favor of Ireland after 35 minutes in the game. And then just before we went to half time, we saw a big play, which we normally see in most games just before half time. And Andre Pollard got caught back in his own goal line. It was a good kick through from Ireland, put pressure on Pollard. He got caught 
and it was a line-out dropout from the South Africans. As a result of that, the Irish put along a big hit, got close into the South African 22 again and won themselves a penalty. So after the uh, half-time siren had already sounded, the Irish uh, captain, Caelan Doris, who was having his second captaincy today for the Irish team, decided that they'd take a kick for goal. Jack Crowley was successful. So Ireland went to half-time at 16 points to six. And I think Andy Farrell would have been pretty happy with that half-time score compared to the previous week in Pretoria. And uh, the dominance that uh, the Irish were showing in that first half was really, really good. They had a good game plan. They came out, they executed it. The Springboks, on the other hand, I think Rashi would have been quite frustrated with his team. There was quite a lot of disruptions for the Springboks in that first half with blood bins, people getting uh, seen to, uh, Willie LaRue going off, Sasha coming on, a couple of mistakes from him, and uh, a few drop balls from the South Africans. So I think they were finding it hard to get their rhythm in this game. But I think a lot of that came down to the way the Irish were playing and they were putting a lot of pressure on South Africa. So it was a complete reversal to what we saw in Pretoria last weekend in the first half. This weekend it was all Ireland, they were dominating and they took the lead into half time at 16 points to 6. The question was going to be, could the Springboks come back and take this game in the second half? Ireland had 75% possession in that first half so it was no wonder they were looking good and I'm sure South Africa were wanting to turn that around as the second half got underway and it was the Springboks that started off better in the second half when we saw a fantastic run by Sasha Feinberg broke up the middle and this is what this young guy is capable of he did a dance all the way through almost the whole entire Irish team he got some support and it looked really really good for South Africa and I think that was just exactly the momentum and the energy the Springboks needed to start off this second half and so it was the South African Springboks comeback was started and the momentum started to shift in this game. Now South Africa went on to attack a couple of plays later after that run from Feinberg and they got very close to the line the ball came out to Faf de Klerk and don't ask me why I don't have an answer to this but he tried to do a little grubber kick through and put the ball over the line for one of his ensuing players to run onto when he had two guys outside of him who could have scored a try. So Faf de Klerk faffed that one up as far as I was concerned for South Africa. They should have scored a try then. They didn't, but they kept the pressure on Ireland and it started to tell. Then a minute later and Sasha went on another run for the Springboks and this young guy is going to be a superstar in years to come. There's no doubt about it. He's got some great feet, fleet of foot and he's able to dance his way through the defence of the Irish team. So he got another good run and again it put South Africa on the front foot. Two minutes later they got another penalty opportunity and Pollard had his kicking boots on today. So there was no chance he was going to miss this one. So South Africa got the scoreboard back to 16 points to 9 and they were starting their comeback in this game. Two minutes later in the 47th minute and a big big uh, moment in the game we saw Kalen Doris getting a yellow card and being sent off for 10 minutes for the Irish yes the captain of the Irish team was going to have a sit down on the side and it was a bit of a bad uh, situation where we saw a bit of a crock roll and uh, James Ryan was uh, involved as well and uh, he was lucky I think not to have any disciplinary issues against him but we saw Doris go off for 10 minutes so as a result of that a penalty ensued to South Africa Andre Pollard was not missing with his goal kicking today and, if, and all of a sudden the South Africans were back to 16 points to 12 and you could just feel that the momentum in the second half was shifting towards the Springboks what could Ireland do to stop this could they get more possession in the game because that seems to be what happened the South Africans were getting more possession and when they did they started to look more dangerous. They were playing the expansive game. I thought they were going to come out and play a very tight game in the second half but by having someone like Sasha on the field. The South Africans were opening the ball up and trying to put the Irish back line in a lot of pressure. On the 50th minute mark, Rassi decided to start ringing the changes and we saw uh, Van Staden, Marco Van Staden, come on for Sia Kolesi and uh, that was the first change that he made. One minute later, we saw an opportunity because Jack Ryan got himself offside and Andre Pollard got another kick opportunity a goal. This time we got the South Africans back to one point in this game and it was 16-15 to Ireland after 51 minutes. So just under 30 minutes to go, South Africa was starting to get some momentum in this game and you thought it was only a matter of time before they were going to hit the lead. 
with the Irish not having the answers that they had in the first half. This was a complete reversal to what we saw in uh, Pretoria the week before where South Africa dominated that first half. Ireland had done so in this game, but South Africa were coming back with some really good play in the second half. And then between the 55th minute and the 60th minute it became a bit of a penalty kicking feast in this game. The first one was to Andre Pollard, the Irish offside again. And this one put the South Africans in the lead for the first time in the game. So they went up to 18 points to 16. But just two minutes later and the Irish got a penalty opportunity and Jack Crowley got that one over. So it was 19 points to 18 and we were going to and fro as far as the lead went in this game. There was no doubt about it. It was going to be a very, very tight game. But then it was only two minutes later and it was Andre Pollard who got another opportunity for the Springboks. 21 points to 19, they went out into the lead. And it was a matter of thinking now, okay, we're going to be in the last 20 minutes of this game. Was one of the teams going to run out of gas? Or were the penalties differential going to be the big difference in this game? We had to wait and see. And then on the 61st minute, we saw a little bit of individual brilliance in this game. Grant Williams, who'd come on for halfback for the Springboks, replacing Faf de Klerk, put in a really nice kick that went deep down into the Irish 22. And the Irish player, I think it was Jamie Osborne, who was back there, got caught by Grant Williams, who had chased up his own kick. It was a fantastic kick and chase by Grant Williams and it put the Irish in a lot of pressure. Now resulting from that we saw a line out and then we saw a penalty go towards South Africa. So as a result of Grant Williams' pressure on the Irish defense ended up winning them a penalty two plays later. That became significant in the game because that penalty by Andre Pollard put South Africa out into the biggest lead they had been in the game. It was 24 points to 19. Now the pressure was really on the Irish in the last 19 minutes of this game to see whether they could get back and get into the lead. 67th minute of the game and the Irish got a penalty. They decided to kick for touch, get close to the South African line, see if they could win the line out and put some pressure on. They did that, they got very close to the line, in fact they got over the line, but RG Schneeman held up the uh, Irish and they weren't able to score at that stage. But the Irish were back on attack now, they seemed to be getting a little bit more energy into this game. The South Africans had dominated the second half up until this stage, so there was an opportunity for Ireland. What were they going to do with it? Well, it was something that we probably weren't expecting. The ball came in, Frawley, who gave a drop goal attempt for about 40 metres out, and it went straight over the post. So that was a great way for the Irish to get a few points back in this game. And uh, it brought them back to 24 points to 22. Just two points behind the Springboks. But there was still... So with 10 minutes le left in the game, Frawley had come onto the field, as I said. And he was doing some really good things. He looked very confident under the high ball. He'd done a couple of good runs as well. He'd injected himself into the Irish back line. And there was a little bit of a resurgence from Ireland at that stage of the game. And it was starting to make a big difference. But South Africa still had the lead. It was two points only. They had to protect it with seven minutes to go in the game. Were they going to be able to hold out? That was the question that everybody was asking in Kings Park. It was going to be an absolute thriller. Now for the next few minutes, Ireland threw everything they had at the South Africans and just threw a couple of bad choices. Kick here, kick there, pass there. They didn't go to hand. It looked like the Irish opportunities to win this game had gone. And we got down to the last minute of the game and it looked like South Africa were going to hang on and win this very tight battle by 24 points to 22. But there was one last play in the game and nobody was expecting this. The ball came out to that man Frawley again for the Irish. He got himself set and he let fly with another drop goal and it went over. And he won the game in the last second of the game for the Irish. Everybody stood in disbelief as the ball sailed between the uprights and the Irish had won this game by one point, 25 points to 24. The Kings Park crowd at Durban fell completely silent. Everybody was gutted for South Africa and uh, an absolute win on the table had been taken off their hands by some brilliant individual play by Frawley in the last minute. And I couldn't help but think that it couldn't have gone to a nicer guy. We all remember back to the uh, Champions Cup and that drop goal attempt that uh, that man Frawley tried and missed. So it's great to see a player that's been through that kind of adversity swing around and come back and have the courage and the bravery, bravery to go again. And that's exactly what he did in this game. Not just once, but he did it twice. Two brilliant drop goals. So hats off to Frawley 
and to Ireland for sticking in there to the end. They were good for this win, I thought. That was the difference in the game. The last weekend, I said the difference in the game was that Springboks uh, bomb squad try, that penalty try. Well, the difference in this game was that one drop goal from Frawley at the end of the game. That's all that was in it. I'm sure that most of South Africa would have woken up this morning thinking, how did we lose that game yesterday? We had control of that second half. It was only those two kicks from Frawley, those two drop goals that brought Ireland back into it to get their noses in front. And what an absolutely fantastic finish it was to another brilliant test match across the world yesterday. So well done to Ireland. They drew the series one all in South Africa. They had their first win there since 2016. A great achievement and now they can go away and have their summer break with a little bit of cherry and pop because they deserved it. It was a fantastic effort. And I think for what they did in the first half alone, the Irish deserved that yesterday. I would have given Frawley the man of the match award. Unfortunately, it went to Oxenche. He had a brilliant game for South Africa, no doubt about it. And there were some good players on the South African side. But I would have given Frawley the player of the match yesterday just for having the nerve and the courage to take that drop goal attempt at the end and to win the game for the Irish. It was absolutely brilliant in the end. Look what I loved about this game and what I've loved about the games over the weekend. It just shows how fantastic world rugby is at the moment. We can have these amazing test matches that are really in the balance right to the last few minutes. We saw the All Blacks against England. We saw a terrific game between Australia and Wales as well. Wales had their opportunity to win that one. Watch out for my video on that one, by the way. And we saw it in Durban yesterday between the Springboks and Ireland, an absolutely fantastic game. So if you're a rugby fan and you're a purist, you'll absolutely recognize the fact that we are in a fantastic period of international rugby at the moment where the top teams in world rugby are really, really taking it to each other. And on any given day, any team is capable of winning. But I've got to tip my hat to Andy Farrell and the Irish yesterday. That first half performance was outstanding. They hung on in the second half and Frawley came up with the heroics at the end to win that game for Ireland and it was well deserved. There were some good players for South Africa. I don't think they were as dominant as they were in that first game and maybe because the bomb squad got mixed up a little bit during this game. Schneeman, as I said, had to come on early in the game. We saw a good performance from Peter Staff to Toy, but it wasn't fantastic. We saw Quagga Smith have a good game without being absolutely brilliant. And the same from Sia Kolesi as well. But we didn't see the South African wings in play a lot this weekend. And I think that was because the Irish strategy was very sound. They were keeping the ball closer to the inside channels. You know what, I've got to give Connor Murray and uh, Jack Crowley a lot of credit in this game. I think they controlled it really well in the first half. They were playing those inside channels. They were doing little short passes to the forwards that were running up. Kalen Doris were doing some good runs. Ryan's, Ryan was doing some good runs. We saw the front row in there as well, really competing. And uh, that set up the platform for Ireland to be able to control it. And then we saw some clever kicking from Jack Crowley in terms of general play strategic kicking. And it was turning South Africa around. He was moving it from one side of the field to the other, but he was also making it contestable. So for Nash and James Lowe, we were able to get up there and put pressure on the South Africans. And I thought that took a lot of petrol out of the South Africans' tank in that first half. But credit to the Springboks. They came back at the beginning of that second half, used the momentum from Sasha Feinberg's run in the first couple of minutes, build into that second half, caused problems for Ireland, put them under pressure, and Andre Pollard with his kicking boots was able to get South Africa back into this game and into the lead of this game. It was just that little bit of brilliance from Frawley at the end that snatched this one for Ireland in the last seconds and Ireland got over the line. So it was an absolutely fantastic game of rugby. I hope you enjoyed it, whether you were a South African fan, an Irish fan, or just a rugby fan in general. It was a brilliant, brilliant game at Kings Park in Durban. Now I'm going to be following all the international rugby this year so make sure you stick around here on Inside Rugby with Mark. The best way to do that of course is hit the subscribe button. If you do like my content give the video a thumbs up as well and a like and uh, make sure you leave your comments. I want you to tell me what you thought of this amazing game in Durban yesterday. Did you enjoy it? Were you on the edge of the seat like I was even though I'm a neutral supporter in this game? It was fab absolutely intense right down to that last second and I thought it was played very, very hard rugby. We saw the Irish really committing in this game 
and uh, I think they would have done Andy Farrell very, very proud indeed. They stepped up when they needed to. They came out in that first half. They tried to dominate the Springboks. They put them under a lot of pressure, and we could see that by the amount of blood that was literally being shed from the Springboks during that game. So a brilliant game. Well done to everybody involved. Okay, folks, that's it. Time for another video to come to an end. Make sure you stick around and watch more content that I'll be putting out soon. Lots of international rugby still to come. The All Blacks are on a plane as I speak on their way to San Diego, just over there. And uh, they're coming up here to play Fiji next weekend. So that should be a good one as well. I'll see you all again very soon in the next video. Until then, stay safe, stay well, everybody. Take care of yourself, take care of others. Keep enjoying your rugby across the world. And it's time to say adios from beautiful Cancun in Mexico. Until next time, have a great day. Bye for now.